Hi everyone, welcome to Mitch in the Kitch. Today we're making pot roast. It's one of my favorites. It goes in the oven, cooks away for a few hours. The hash just smells delicious. Obviously eating it at the end is the best part, but it's just a dish that makes you feel good and it just reminds you of being at home on a Sunday. And we're gonna go ahead and recreate that today. So we are using brisket. I love using brisket for this, but you can use any meat that holds up well to a braise, big piece of chuck, uh, some short ribs, really anything that's in that bigger, tougher family of meat that's gonna do really well in the oven. So along with that meat, we're gonna have some carrots, some onion, some potatoes and some garlic. That's all gonna get cooked in with some beef broth and some wine, a little bit of rosemary, a little bit of thyme. It's really simple, it's easy to make. Like I said, this part goes pretty quick and then once it's in the oven, it hangs out there, it does its own thing and we just get to smell it all day. All right, the first step here is getting our meat seasoned. Just traditional salt and pepper, that's all we need. We're gonna go ahead and flip it over, get both sides. When you're cooking with any kind of meat, any kind of protein, uh, you really do wanna get both sides of that seasoned well. It's gonna be really good for you in the end. And as you can see, this side of the brisket has a little bit more of the fat on it, and that's okay. We trimmed it down before. I like to trim it down pretty thin. Uh, you know, on the back end, when we take this out, we slice it up. I don't really like those nice uh, fatty pieces. You know, if we were doing something outside on the barbecue or we were smoking it down, I might leave a little bit more on. But for this type of thing, I like to cut it uh, relatively thin. And as you're gonna see, we're about to sear it real quick. And what we're gonna do is try to render as much of the fat remaining to get into the dish, bring out the delicious flavor of the vegetables. All right, so that meat is seasoned. We're gonna go ahead and sear that off real quick. I got a little bit of oil into our Dutch oven and we're gonna get this beautiful piece of meat, fat side down into the pan. There we go, give it a press, make sure it's got really good contact with the pot, get this out of the way. So we're gonna get these guys chopped up into pretty good sized chunks here, one to two inches, depending on the thickness of the carrot. So at the base end where it's thicker, it's gonna be not quite as big of a cut. Some of these guys that are particularly skinny, um, I'm just gonna leave it like that because you know it's gonna be nice. All right, that's it for the carrot. I'm gonna go probably an eighth or eighth of the onion. So cut that in half, cut that in half, and in half again. A nice thick cut onion. Uh, with this type of dish, when you're you know braising it, when you're cooking it that long in the oven, if you end up cutting it too small, it's just gonna be you know hard to fish out later. Uh, you're gonna want those nice big chunks of onion. It's gonna render down. It's gonna get all nice and translucent on you. We're gonna want these big pieces. All right, next up is our garlic. It's a whole head of garlic. Uh, we're gonna leave these pretty much whole. I'm gonna go ahead and smash them and that'll help get some of the juices and the flavor out. But again, for a dish like this, you don't wanna cut it up too fine. It's gonna get plenty of time to soften up on you. And the end result, I love those nice whole pieces of garlic that have cooked down. They turn nice and uh, sugary and sweet. It's awesome. Now we wanna check our, our meat here. It's been in there for a couple minutes. Yeah, you're starting to see some of that color develop and that is beautiful. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a flip and sear off the bottom side. The reason we're doing this, we could just throw the brisket straight in, but as you're developing that crust, that dark color, those are the sugars caramelizing in the meat. Uh, that's an integral part, I think, of any dish and something that I'm always striving for. It's starting to smell really good though. You're starting to get that nice beef flavor coming out of the pan. And right now I'm just kind of pushing down with the tongs, making sure we're getting as much contact with the pan as possible to caramelize and get us those nice flavors. Typically when you're doing this, you know, there's gonna be stuff that sticks at the bottom. That's called the fond. And we're gonna deglaze that with our liquid in a little bit. So anything that sticks at the bottom, it's gonna get used back as flavor later, so don't worry about it. All right, so our potatoes, we're using Yukon Gold Potatoes. I like these guys, they're really creamy. They're gonna take on the juice and the flavor of the sauce really well. Because we're cooking this for a few hours in the oven, you do run the risk of overcooking and then they just kind of fall apart on you. For this particular dish, what I like to do is get them chopped up and then add it you know, one to two hours into the cook, depending on the size of the brisket and how quickly you think it's gonna cook. You kind of time your potatoes about an hour before that and you make sure that they're cooked, they're creamy, they're taking on that good flavor. So just like the onions and the carrots, we're gonna cut these up into nice big chunks, about an inch a piece here. So some of the bigger ones, you know, about yay. Some of the other ones, the smaller guy, I'll just cut this in half. All right, that's it. Like I said, it's really easy, really simple. Go ahead and 
check the brisket. Oh yeah, we're getting nice and caramel. That's beautiful. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this brisket out. And now you assess the bottom of the pan. Um, you know, there's not too much fat in there, so I'm gonna add a little bit of oil. And then I'm gonna get the onions and the carrots in first. All right, the onion and carrot are in. I'm gonna go get a spatula so I can stir this up. Uh, we're gonna hold off just a touch on the garlic because they are smaller. And we're gonna give these guys a minute or two head start and then get the garlic in. Got my spatula, go ahead, give these guys a mix. Same idea here with the beef. We're just developing, you know, a nice uh, caramel reaction on the outside. Don't need to go too far. I mean, they're gonna get plenty cooked in that pot roast. You know, I do like the carrots nice and cooked down. We've got our liquid here. Now this guy is part wine, part beef broth. We're a little bit on the smaller side of the brisket, so I went with about three quarters of a cup of wine. We're about three and a half total cups of liquid, so you know, two and a half or so cups of beef broth. I do use low sodium, that way I can adjust it on my own later. Now the secret ingredient, fresh thyme and a fresh rosemary. I always end up having way too much when I buy it in the grocery store, but I do, I chop it up, I put it into ice trays and I freeze them. And now, you know, just like that, we've got our fresh thyme and our fresh rosemary and we don't waste anything. Give the onions and the carrots a little stir here. I'm starting to develop a nice crust on that. Gonna get our garlic in now. After about 30 seconds to a minute, that's when we're gonna get our liquid in and deglaze. We're getting that nice bond at the bottom of the pot here that's gonna really be nice for us. You know, when you're saying deglaze, uh, that means that there has to be a glaze to start with, and that glaze is all those good sugars caramelizing and sticking to the bottom of the pot. Okay, so the garlic has been in for about a minute here. We can see it's starting to get nice and golden brown as well. We're gonna go in with the liquid, get this deglazed. Probably gonna get a little bit steamy, a little bit loud, but that's all right. Oh, not too bad. Beautiful. And we're gonna go ahead and scrape the bottom with this uh, wooden spatula. That's why for this dish, I particularly like the wooden spatula. It's really good at getting all those bits out. You know, if you're using the plastic, um, it can get a little bit dicey on you, but with a wooden guy, and especially one that's got a straight flat edge like this, man, that smells really good. Uh, you're smelling the wine, you're smelling the beef broth, you're smelling the veg. It's already smelling like a great day at home, hanging out with the family. Once we get it to a boil, we're gonna add our meat back, we're gonna put the lid on, and take it to a 275 degree oven. I think this guy is about two and a half to three pounds, so it'll probably be done in just two or three hours. If you got something in the five plus pound range, uh, you could probably let it go for a couple hours before checking, but with the size of this, I'll probably check after the first hour, and I'll probably do a thermometer as well. You know, uh, brisket and these pepper cuts of meat, you know, they're cooked when they're at you know, 140, 150, 160, like a normal steak would be, but because there's so much connective tissue, uh, it really needs to go to a much hotter temperature. So same idea with barbecue, you really wanna see that somewhere in the 200 to 205 range. That's when those collagens break down, it gets nice and tender, it's really delicious for us. So combination of you know, field as a field tender when you stick a fork or a knife into it, and also what's the temperature telling us. The other advantage with a guy this size is, you know, we gotta put those potatoes in. So if I check it after an hour and it's already getting up there, you know, 160, 170, I know it's not too far away from being cooked. Uh, that's when we'll get the potatoes in. Okay, so our broth is starting to boil away here. This is the time to get our brisket back in, right on top of the vegetables and on top of the broth. If there's any extra juices in here, there's just a couple. Might as well get those into the party. Get our lid on and transfer it into our oven at 275 degrees. It's been about three and a half hours. Our pot roast is finally done, nice and tender. The house just smells amazing. You can smell the herbs, the rosemary, the thyme. You can smell the beef, a little bit of that wine too. Uh, I'm really excited to dig into this and to slice it up. So let's get to it. Oh yeah, see all that steam coming off right there? Nice and hot. One of those benefits of the Dutch oven is it traps all that steam in there, which helps us get that brisket nice and tender. Super tender, you can see it dripping. The side over here is already falling off on us. That's all right. All right, so that's our brisket, as you can see. 
it shrinks up a little bit. Uh, typical of any meat, as you cook it, it's gonna shrink up a bit. It's gonna release some of the juices. On the flip side, it soaked up all that good beef broth, that wine, those flavors. This is looking really good. Like I said, it smells fantastic. Now, before we slice it, I'm gonna give the broth a taste just to make sure the salt is where we want it because we are gonna be able to utilize the broth as kind of a sauce over the top. Oh yeah, it's tasting good. One more. Oh, it tastes really good. I'm gonna add a little bit. We use that low sodium beef broth. That way we're able to control the salt ourselves. Sometimes if you use a full salt broth at the beginning, as you go along, it concentrates down and gets a little bit too salty. So we like to be able to control that with a low sodium or even no sodium beef broth. A little bit of salt's gonna go in here. Nothing crazy. Get it mixed up. Now another thing you can do with the broth, if you're inclined, is to turn it into a gravy. I've done this in the past and it's really delicious, but honestly, I've also made this dish in the past and you don't even need to do that. The broth itself is so rich and uh, delicious, not even necessary. So we're gonna get to slicing. The key with most cuts of meat and particularly brisket is to slice against the grain. So I got this guy laid out here. You can see the grain is running this way. So we wanna slice against it. Now I got my nice long uh, brisket slicer, which I got basically just to slice brisket. And we're gonna go ahead and get this guy sliced. Oh yeah. See that end there is already falling off. That's looking really good. You can use your thumb on the back end if you're feeling like it's gonna fall off on you. And be careful too, this is still really hot, so just be aware as you're cutting here, I'm getting some heat in my fingers there. I mean, this is looking awesome. I'm so excited to try it. We're gonna keep slicing, get it fully sliced. And now, as with any brisket I cook, the little end piece is always for the chef. Look at that, I mean, you just press it and it just completely is falling apart there. Wow, that is a tremendous piece of brisket right there. Got the pot roast, you taste those herbs. Uh, the juice is just tremendous. Let's go ahead and dip it in the juice. All right, so I'm gonna try this piece of brisket dipped in the juice. Oh yeah, that really brings it all together. I'm gonna get this pot roast transferred onto our serving dish and then we'll see about those vegetables. We got a serving dish here, we gotta be careful because it is tender. And get that right in the middle. See all these pieces that fell off, we'll just tuck them back here. Maybe still another bite, because that is so good. Here's our brisket pot roast. Let's go ahead and take out those vegetables. I'm going with the tongs for these potatoes here. As you can see, they're still holding together nicely. You can see the onions have really softened down. So as you're taking off these potatoes, some of the onions like to stick to them because they're just so caramelized. All right, we got our potatoes. Time to go in for the carrots now. Now with the pot roast, I love when the carrots get nice and soft. They cook all the way down. And if you wanted a carrot that's a bit more firm in texture, you could add it later in the dish like we did with the potatoes. But in this case, to me, pot roast, uh, a soft carrot, they really go together. So that's what I'm after. This one. We got our potatoes, we got our carrots. Let's go in for that onion and some of that garlic. Get a slotted spoon for this so we can just scoop it out. All the juice will fall to the bottom. As you can see, these guys get so cooked down. They're really soft, they're really sweet. And those huge cloves of garlic, you know, traditionally you get a big clove of garlic. I mean, we can see right here, we got a clove of garlic. And as you push on it, I mean, it's just super tender and falling apart. That's gonna be a really, really good nugget there for you and your guests. We have all our vegetables ready. We are gonna ladle out some of our delicious broth. Probably gonna add some over the top to the brisket, maybe a little to the potatoes, and also get us a nice little side of sauce when we bring it to the table. I guess your family, whoever's eating, they can pour as much as they want over the top. We've got our little gravy boat here. I'm gonna get a ladle. You could strain this out as well. Uh, I don't like to do that. You know, you get a lot of the good herbs in here. You get some of those bits of garlic and onion that have fallen off. A little bit of the carrot sometimes if it comes off on you. There we go. A little bit of gravy off to the side. And then the last thing I do before I bring this to the table 
Let's get that gravy right back over the top of the brisket. Let it absorb back into the meat for us. And that is it. That is our beautiful pot roast. We made it with brisket. We cooked it with potatoes, with garlic, with onion, with carrot. Our broth was beef broth and part wine. We ended up cooking it for about three and a half hours in the oven until it was nice and tender. As, I, as you can see, crazy tender. This brisket's fallen off. I hope you guys enjoy. Hope you cook it at home and love it. If you do, please let me know. Enjoy. Enjoy.